sort of the basis of my artwork boils down to drawing. And then from that, it sort of branches out into painting, and then I do a lot of murals, and also uh, printmaking and bookmaking as well, but it's all kind of based in drawing. My work is sort of all based around kind of utilizing like a, a kind of cartoon vernacular images. That's sort of like the defining trope that kind of connects all my artwork together. I find that they're interesting to, to kind of use those images because they have an ability to create imagery that connects with the viewer instantly because they recognize that, but it's not based in reality. You're still able to invent a lot, so you kind of have the best of both worlds, I guess. So I have a wall back there that's um, like a, a wall of like all the, most of the artists I like the most. Probably my favorite artist ever is um, Philip Guston. He was someone who utilized sort of cartoon imagery within his painting practice. Once I saw the, the kinds of things he was able to achieve with his paintings, I thought, oh wow, that's something that I could take away from and, and do with my work. So he's probably my biggest influence. I graduated from from RISD in 2011, I ended up moving back to St. Louis. I was working like three jobs and, you know, didn't have a studio and I was trying to figure out a way to force myself to um, keep making art. And so I developed this idea that I would carry around a sketchbook, like a little pocket-sized sketchbook, and draw something in that sketchbook every day. That was the project and that kind of was what helped me kind of break into the scene here. and get attention for that and establish myself here. I've been increasingly doing more kind of uh, commissioned work. It's kind of like a big part of how I, I make a living is to kind of like freelance illustration and also these kinds of commissioned gigs. At this point, luckily, I feel like when they approach me about something, I'm not just some unknown quantity. They kind of see that I have a certain aesthetic that they want and so they're that's why they're coming to me. So I try to fit their ideas into my kind of aesthetic, trying to kind of blur the lines between a work of art that I would be making my, on my own versus something that I've been kind of hired to do. I think I used to care more about what the viewer thought of the work. When you're growing up, you think that like the artwork that you do will somehow like have some kind of huge impact, you know, like they'll see the thing that I make and then the whole world will change and <laughs> the world will become a bigger, brighter place. Once you kind of get over that idea, you end up just kind of making work for yourself. Mm -hmm.